If you've never been to the Road to California Quilt Show, it takes place at the Ontario Convention Center in January, and we nearly always have beautiful weather. As soon as you enter the convention hall, you see a striking display of quilts hanging from the tall ceilings. The show has competition quilts, as well as many special exhibits. Vendors come from all over the country to exhibit at this show, making it a shopper's heaven. For this video, I've enlarged the quilts as much as possible on the screen. It does not represent their actual size. Instead, I wanted you to see them with as much detail as possible. The description I'm giving of the quilts comes from the placard that each artist created for their quilt. So let's get started. Kestrel's quilts are so whimsical. This one is the one that got away. She says, only two guys with more muscles than brains would think it's a good idea to strap a steam-powered, propeller-driven flying machine on the back of a dog. But every society has its idiots. At least in this one, Lucky is having the time of his life. And he makes it safely back to ground, despite his not-too-bright owners. Lamar River Valley 06. 06, named for her year of birth, was inspired by the reintroduction of gray wolves into Yellowstone National Park. 06 became the dominant breeding female of the Lamar Canyon pack in the park. She was the fourth generation of wolves born after their reintroduction to Yellowstone in 1995. She was an alpha female whose territory allowed tourists to observe her behavior. Dubbed a rock star as one of the most photographed wolves in history. Pima. I have a love for owls, especially their eyes. They are beautiful, mysterious creatures. And when I saw this photo, the eye called me. This piece was difficult and all about perseverance, taking over a year to complete, rethink, tear out, and create. I learned to never give up on my vision. There are over 1,000 pieces of fabric in this quilt. I tried a lot of new ideas and learned from all of them. Felting, paints, mixed media, and silk threads were used. Raising a strong girl. I imagine this young girl looking at the photo of herself and truly owning the strength that she sees in her face and in her clenched fist. The stitched advice is a collection of responses to the question, how do you raise a strong girl? Chasing that neon rainbow, inspired by Judy Niemeyer's technique of the month, pattern coral reef, my personally designed version is done in eight colors of ombre batiks on background batiks with silver metallic specks. Enhanced with 8,400 individually placed Swarovski crystals in eight colors that followed the custom quilting patterns of the rainbow batiks. Now I'm translating this one to English, the magic garden. The inspiration for this quilt is from a watercolor painting of sunflowers that I did in the past, as well as my collection of French border fabrics from Provence. I added in my favorite birds, flowers, and bunnies. Ellie Belly is a story of Ellie and her son, Wally Awanga. He learns to use his trunk to have fun, to listen to the wisdom of others, and the importance of his family legacy. Elephants play an important role in the environment where they live and have roamed the wild for 15 million years. Today, this iconic species faces the biggest threats to its survival due to ivory poaching, human wildlife conflict, and habitat destruction. This next group of quilts are all by Andrea Brokenshire. I didn't have photos of the placards. I was too busy soaking in the details of her exquisite floral quilts. I've probably photographed all these and many more before between the IQA Long Beach and Houston shows.
Now you get to look at the pretty, pretty flowers. She does two different kinds of backgrounds with her quilts. One is a painted background where she does a whole cloth painted surface like on these stargazer lilies. And then the other style she does is the confetti background seen on the irises. After she paints the flower, she turns the edge and appliques it onto a confetti background of lots and lots of little snips of fabric, which are all placed onto the background surface. A ton of free motion quilting is then done to secure the snips into place. I spent hours stalking Andrea at the Houston Festival last fall, where I absorbed as much as I could during her gallery talks, and I signed up for two classes with her here at the Road to California Quilt Show. I took one class in free motion quilting, which we did on her Bird of Paradise panel. The second class was two days of fabric painting, working on a black calla lily. She called it the Black Pearl. This is my class project in progress. I had a fantastic time getting to play, wearing a student cap instead of an instructor cap, which I haven't done in a few years. And road was the perfect opportunity since it is practically in my own backyard. I didn't credit these particular quilts. I was just in awe of the elaborate border designs and how they incorporated embroidery in the designs that they used. It's just incredible. I will admit I will probably never do this kind of work, but I admire people who do. One of the things I love best about going to a show in person is getting to zoom in on just these kinds of details. Heading back to the competition quilts, Valley View Yosemite. As an artist working with textiles, I enjoy trying to capture the effects of reflection, transparency, and the refraction of light on water and other reflective materials. Rick McGrath's photo, taken in Yosemite, had a great deal of reflection and transparency. I hand dye much of my own fabric for this type of work and add some media, ink usually, as needed. Machine quilted. Now, I'm probably not pronouncing this right, but it's Main Street Tonopah. She says, every quilt I make presents a challenge. This one was to depict in fabric and thread various light sources, from street lights to car taillights to neon signs, and, of course, the fading sunlight as the sun was setting. Magic Beans Number two, Eden. Fantasy abounds in this Garden of Eden. My improv piecing took a new direction in leaf type shapes and odd shaped flowers. Enter the world of magic in this paradise on earth. Now, okay, some quilts you walk right by without understanding them. And this was one of those for me. I didn't really get it until I saw the white glover talking about it, and then I stopped and paid more attention. This one's called Beyond Reason. It says, some endeavors are beyond reason. This quilt is the embodiment of a dream, not of a finished product, but the journey and completion of a process. I believed I could, I thought I should, I said I would, and I did. Now. I want you to look carefully at the ribbon on the quilt. Now we're going to look at it close up. Compare the size of the edge of that ribbon to the size of these pieces. Beyond reason? Yeah, that's another way of saying insane. The total piece count was 226,576. She said that this quilt was started in 2018 and took around 6,000 hours to complete. Now, this is not a very large quilt, but it has really lovely impact. Water ballet, or should I say water ball lay? A group of women performing water ballet. It takes a bit of practice and a lot of perseverance before the performance is right. This quilt and artist is from Germany. I've seen lots of quilts by Janet Stone, and this is my favorite to date. 
butterflies, bees, and alphabet trees. She says, I've had the word alphabet trees in my head for a while and always wanted to make a quilt featuring trees to use that word. The gold letters were free motion embroidered and the cream colored backgrounds were fussy cut and appliqued using a decorative stitch. Kathy McNeil's work always catches my eye. This one, called Wetland Romance, it reads, The wetlands are home to 40% of the world's species. They protect us from flooding, provide clean water, and play a crucial role in combating climate change. My Art Nouveau border reflects the romance, shelter, and nursery habitat of these critical ecosystems. Made from my own background fabric and seta silk dyes. Now, I personally love all things Art Nouveau. And did you catch the frogs that form the bottom border? So in addition to seeing all the delicious, delicious quilts, one of the delightful things about quilt shows is, of course, running into our quilty friends. I only caught a few on camera. Here's a couple of my friends from the Night Owl Quilters Guild I used to belong to. And Alicia, the batty lady, one of my favorite vendors. Cindy and I met in Judy Niemeyer's Wedding Star class many, many years ago. She finished the project that we started in the class and did a beautiful job. Mine is still in my UFO pile, but I added it to my Redabugs UFO Club list this year. So if all goes according to plan, I'll get it finished. Speaking of UFO Club, Nancy was a member of my UFO Club last year, and she was also in the Andrea Brokenshire fabric painting class with me at Road. It's so much fun getting to see my clubbers along with newsletter subscribers and past students at shows. Lately, my BFF Cindy and I seem to only see each other at shows. I'm so glad she was there with her formerly our, a couple of old broads booth. And surprise, surprise, we actually got to go out to eat together after the show one night and do some catching up. I made a new friend at the show. This is her quilt. I thought it was lovely, and I particularly noticed her name because I wondered when I looked at it if Dale was a man or a woman. Dale and I sat next to each other in both of Andrea's classes, and I learned quite a lot from her as well as from Andrea. From Dreams Come Wings, Dale said, From Dreams Come Wings is born from my own recurring dreams of flying. But haven't we all had such dreams? Flying has always captivated me with its promise of boundless freedom. I've made it a reality as a pilot in the cockpit of a sailplane and a freestyle skydiver dancing in the air. But dreams are also aspirations that can grow metaphorical wings that transform into something real. So let your dreams take flight. In addition to the competition quilts, there are always a few other special exhibits. This year, there was the 100 year anniversary of the Hoffman Challenge. Everyone uses the same group of fabrics to create a quilt. There was also the exhibit of Andrea Brokenshire's floral quilts and an exhibit called Break My Soul, an exhibit of 21st century black quilt artists. And these quilts were all quilted by Armonica Brown. And again, I may not pronounce this right. Dami Lolo. Dami Lolo means created me with wealth, the making of a woman. Using repurposed fabrics and collage techniques, the quilt top is created on canvas. The canvas top was then prepared, border added, and free motion quilted, and finished on a sit-down long arm machine. There was also an exhibit of vintage quilts, all with a nursery rhyme theme. And then there was a special exhibit that wasn't in the ballroom or the main hall. Another of my favorite reasons for attending a quilt show is to see my own quilt on display, Early Morning Flower Market. Based on a photograph I took in Amsterdam on a tulips and windmills cruise, the flowers looked so beautiful that spring morning, I wanted to take them all home. 
This is a whole cloth quilt on white prepared for dyeing fabric. The outline drawn onto the fabric with a permanent pen. Then 30 different shades of Prismacolor pencil and 29 shades of so fine thread were used to complete a portrait of beautiful, forever fresh market flowers. Well, that's it for today's journey through my favorites from the 2024 Road to California Quilt Show. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and click subscribe to be notified of future videos. I'd love to see you share your thoughts about this video or the Road to California Quilt Show in the comments. Until next time, there's magic in the making. Bye-bye.